Hello, welcome back. I'm Sly, New Player Journey, Episode 2, Treasure Heaven. Let's begin. Trying to, trying to avoid as much contact as we, we want because we're low health right now. Still have to watch that stamina. You don't really want it to fully deplete, especially when you're running, just in case something arrows onto you. As we're running, we are eating so that we're regenerating our health. Once you pass this bridge, our goal is to cross over here. So we're going to want to swim to these islands over here. I'm going to start heading north. There's a small passageway and I'll show you where that's at. Attack! Yeah, yeah, you're tough. <clears throat> you're going to watch out for all those guys. you keep on heading north. There's little bunnies in this game. You can kill them for food source. You can't actually tame any of them. At least not without a mod. Keep on heading north. Not sure what's going on there. Am I going to hit? No, nope, he's just getting stuck. Okay, so this is what you're looking for over here. There's a passageway. You'll, you'll notice it kind of goes up and then it curves around. That's exactly where you want to go. Okay, we've made it to the north side of the lake. Let's keep on heading up this trail, and there's going to be something up here you're definitely going to want to pay attention to. There's actually two things up here you're going to want to get, and I'll show you here in just a second. We're going to try to avoid everything as we, we cross through, just because I don't want to spend the time trying to fight it. Our goal is to reach the northwest the best we can. We're at a good enough level. So right underneath this broken bridge here, you'll find this diary. Go ahead and interact with it. Once you interact with it, you learn a, a new emote called Submissive. You're going to want to learn a lot of the new emotes, and they're actually showing you what it is right here. And I can show you as well. <clears throat> nope. Submissive. Let's keep on heading north. So after you pick up the submissive right below the bridge emote, you're going to want to head over here. And once you reach up there, I know it looks a little sketchy. Don't worry, he will not attack you. That's Nunu the cannibal. He's the Yog trainer, so he'll be able to teach us the religion Yog. So you want to come up here and talk to him. Where's he at? Um, okay. I'm not sure where he is currently. Normally he stands right about here, and you could just speak with him and you could learn the religion Yog. He may have been killed by another player. This is a public server. We'll have to come back a little bit later and see if we can learn this religion. But let's but I digress, let's keep on pushing forward. So don't be worrying too much. And here we go. Here's our first hyena up here. And I'll actually show you how to take them out real quick. You just have to be careful because they do tend to travel in packs. There's two of them over here. Hopefully he has an aggroed on. He's aggroed on to us. So we're going to stay clear of that one. And stack that bleed. Do a roll out. There you go. And then get your stamina up. Stack the bleed. And roll out. And there you go. He's going to die to the bleed. And since he's going to die right there, we're actually going to chop him up a bit. And let's continue. Let's kill this next hyena. And as you're killing them, you want to make sure you eat to regen that health if you lost any. This guy's dancing over here. Look at him. What is he doing? Oh, Alright, let's go. Alright, bleed. And be careful. They do put a crippling effect on you, which tends to slow you down just a bit. 
But you can go ahead and stack the bleeds, just roll back. It shouldn't affect your roll at all. And let's take his leather. Thank you. And let's keep on pressing forward. Put that hatchet away. As you pass through this valley, sometimes you'll come across little baby hyenas, usually around this area. I personally do not like to gather the hyena babies. I don't find them efficient at all as a pet. Here you go, one. Here's one right now. Careful of his parents over there. Oh, wow. There's another one right here. There's several of them in this region right here. But I personally, I don't prefer to go hyena, so I'd just be careful. There's some ostriches over here, and there's actually three of them. We're just going to run past them. Don't worry too much. They, they won't be able to catch up as fast. Pretty much all you have to do is just guide them and kite them around obstacles, and eventually they'll de-aggro from you. There we go. Ooh, someone dropped some loot here. Let's see what it is. Wow, there's a lot of feathers. So we're actually going to take those feathers. We're going to take that fiber that just prevents us from collecting them. And let's take the arrows as well. We don't really need the campfire. We're perfectly fine like that. But that's a nice thing to come across. You don't usually come across loot bags just out here in the open. We are on a public server, so a player definitely dropped that. And let's keep on pressing north. There should be up here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so on this server, and this is, happens a lot on a lot of the public servers, you'll come across these map rooms that are already established. And what a map room is, is it allows you to teleport across the map if you've already activated the obelisk in that region. So this is, this is how it works. You would click one of these statues, and your bracelet is, if it's attuned to the obelisk, meaning you've activated on the obelisk, you'll be able to teleport there from any map room. So on this specific server, near near every single obelisk, luckily there was a clan that built a map room near it. And I believe they have a sign up over here. Lannister's Travel Agency. The Dregs DRG. And they have a little box here that people donate. Do, don't steal from these. These are mainly just to give back to the Lannisters for supplying these map rooms all across the map. So we give thanks and appreciate it. And let's let's donate a little bit since we're here. Uh, I, I know that's not too much for them there, but we're going to put the arrows in there. We're, we're a little bit low level, so let's actually throw this, this pelt in there. We can get a little bit more later, and that's just our contribution. Unfortunately, we don't have too much to give to them, but we do appreciate what they accomplished. And down here, you'll see the obelisk. So this one's a little bit tricky to get to. Oh, luckily, there is a little bridge here, though. That's very fortunate for us. So a lot of players do this as a kind of a friendly courtesy thing. Uh, we're going to run up here. So the goal is is to run to the obelisk and activate it and then run away. That purple pink cloud you see next to it will give you corruption. When you get corruption in the game, what it does is it puts a negative buff on your health and stamina, which means it subtracts the total amount of health or stamina you have. So you don't want to stay in it too long. And the effect doesn't take effect for quite a bit. So you want to just run in real quick and run out. So we're going to run. We're going to jump over. Ooh, made it. We're going to run and activate it, see, gaining corruption, and we're going to run out. And we're going to try to jump on this ledge. Okay, that's good. And we're good. Cool. We've activated that obelisk, and now we should be able to teleport to it. And it should be this one right here. So if we click E, we'll teleport to that obelisk. We're not going to do that right now, but this is what it would look like. So the difference between non-bracelet, see, bracelet not attuned. And when your bracelet is attuned to the obelisk, you're able to teleport. So right now, we currently only have one. Well, let's keep on pressing north. So as we keep on pressing north, you'll notice a whole bunch of rocks like this. These are actually iron nodes. These are great resources to collect iron, as well as you'll come across black ones, just like these over here. This is going to be coal. Coal is a great resource, especially in the beginning, to burn as fuel. It's a lot better than wood. Just to the east of us, we're actually just passing the Forbidden City now. That's it over there. You kind of want to stay clear of that until you get to a much higher level. I would suggest at least over 25. If you're an experienced player, if you're not an experienced player, I would wait until you get to level 30, possibly 35, and have some good gear. So if we made it to Relic City, Relic City is just right through those gates. We're actually going to keep on pressing a little bit north. What I want to do is get established and make myself a little shelter real quick, and then I will show you the treasure heaven in the Relic City.
We found the spot where we want to build. I actually set up a little spot right here. I put my bedroll down and I put everything I had into this wooden box. I'm actually going to make sure it's locked. Please make sure it's locked if you're on an open public server. If you're on a private server, that's not going to matter as much. But whenever you're on a public server, you want to make sure you lock your boxes. Otherwise, other players can access them. Even if they're not in your clan. So we're going to go gather resources and then we're going to start the build. Let's do this.
All right, not bad, not bad. We finished our first step of the build. We got our foundations down. We built a couple walls. We put a door in, and we also added additional three more boxes. Those boxes are there, so when we do our treasure heaven, we're able to fill them all up with the treasure we accomplished. I'll show you the rest of the treasure, and at the end, I'll leave the map up so you can see where all the treasure locations are. My name is Sly, and stay tuned for the next episode.